Hello everyone, this is Mad Dog. Today we're going to be taking a look at using the AGM88C Harm using the position mode and its three sub modes. Stay tuned. Pause has three sub modes. The first one is RUK Range Unknown. This is the mode we would use if the location of the SAM system was the less precise, where our steer point is not quite on the uh, radar system. The seeker of the AGM-88 will look at uh, in a radius of 20 nautical miles around the steer point to find the radar system. It will not loft, which means that the range we can hit a uh, radar system will be reduced. And, but it also offers an off-axis shot, which means that we can turn 90 degrees or more from the steer point, fire our missile, and the missile will turn and make its way towards the steer point. Next, we have PB, pre-briefed. So when the location of the um, radar system is a little more precise, we can use this mode. And um, the seeker head of the missile will look at for a target within 10 nautical miles of the steer point. It will loft the missile, which means that once the missile goes off the rail, it's going to go up, pitch up towards high altitude where the air is thin in order to maximize its range. Then it's going to come down and turn on its seeker and look for a uh, radar system. We cannot do off-axis shot with PB mode. Also, we need to be within 5 degrees on each side of the uh, steering azimuth steering line towards our steer point to be able to make a shot otherwise we won't have the uh, symbology and the airplane will not allow the launch of the missile last mode is the eom equation of motion in this mode the uh, missile will loft just like in pb and we can also do off axis shot just like ruk now we need the steer point to be more closely located to the radar system because the seeker of the uh, missile will only look for a radar system within five nautical miles of the steer point. So if our intel is not that precise, we use RUK, and the more precise the location of the radar system is, we can move towards PB or EOM. This image is a representation of the harm flight profiles. So we can see that with RUK range unknown, the missile is going to leave the rails, stay horizontal, turn on its seeker, and guide towards a SAM system. The uh, footprint or the field of regard of the missile is the largest. With pre briefed, the missile is going to go up and then it's going to come down, turn on its seeker, and guide towards its uh, assigned target. And in magenta here, we can see that the field of regard is a little smaller than uh, RUK, but larger than. EOM. EOM follows a very similar flight profile. It's going to go up to maximize its range first, then come down, turn the seeker on, and look for a uh, radar system within five nautical miles of our steer point. And this is the most precise uh, sub mode. All right, welcome back to the cockpit. Let's get set up. Master arm arm, master mode air to ground, left side. Let's go to the, our weapon page. Right side, power up the AGM-88, select has, pause, and then uh, we can switch modes here and we're going to start with RUK, range unknown. The target we're going to be uh, after today is an SA-2 and it's currently not uh, showing up on our left MFD because it's on table 3 so we can use the OSB here to select table 3 and then select uh, the SA2, or we can use TMS left to go through the tables. So what we currently have here is the AGM-88C Harm on station 3. We'll be looking for an SA2 at steer point 1. All the information below the green line is information of uh, the missiles on the rail. And once we uh, launch the missile, the information is going to transfer to above the green line. If we wanted to change the um, radars included in a table, we can do so by clicking UFC. That would bring us up to on the uh, DED. 
and then we can uh, alter the codes for uh, whatever uh, sound system we're looking for. In the heads up display, we have harm selected and we have the uh, field of regard box representation in the bottom of the HUD. Uh, if, if we change the sum mode from RUK to PB, there is no change. And if we go to EOM, you see the box is smaller because I was, we just discussed before the field of regard of the EOM sum mode is much smaller. Back to RUK. Right side, we have our dynamic launch zone scaled on 80 miles. So the current distance to our steer point one is 53 miles. And uh, once uh, the uh, Chevron gets into the uh, hook distance here, it means that the uh, missile will have enough energy to uh, steer towards its target. Keep in mind that since the uh, precise location of the SAM system is unknown, uh, it could be on this side of the steer point or, or on the other side of the steer point. So if you are um, launching the missile right at the maximum distance it's capable to uh, get to, uh, it might not have enough energy because if the uh, radar site is on the other side of the steer point, it might not be able to reach it. The bottom line here is telling us that uh, to be facing the uh, SAM system or the steer point one rather, we should be on a heading a 024 for 48. So if we turn left just a tiny bit here, 024, that's the heading we uh, need to go directly to steer point one. And we also have the box here in the bottom of the HUD. Remember that we can do an off axis shot with RUK sum mode and that this mode will not loft the missile. So the missile will have a horizontal flight path, but we can still make a launch if we are not aiming directly at the steer point. We are now entering the uh, acceptable launch area. And we're going to see the big rectangle at the bottom of the HUD starts to flash. There we go. So from here, we could uh, launch our missile. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a quick left turn here just to show you that even if we are not aiming right at the steer point, the missile will still track, make a right turn, and go straight for it. Magnum. Here the missile is going. See the horizontal flight path? It, it's made its turn and it's uh, aiming towards the SA-2 site or at the um, steer point one. As we can see on our RWR, the SAM is not, the SAM system is not active yet. The radar is not emitting. So our missile will have a hard time to steer towards the radiations. So we're gonna try to uh, get the uh, radar operator to switch on its radar and track us so that, so that our missile can track his radar. Nice, the SA-2 is now active. Let's see if our missile can get to it. So this is exactly the scenario I was talking about. The uh, missile is aiming in the right direction, but unfortunately it's not gonna have the energy to make it because the uh, steer point was not right on the uh, SA-2 uh, system location. Uh, the missile will uh, run out of energy before it reaches its target. So what we're gonna do now is attempt another shot from uh, much closer in this time. The SAM system is uh, active. We are roughly 40 degrees up axis. Magnum. Missile's going. It's making its right turn. Still the horizontal trajectory. If the radar is still on, the missile should have no problem hitting the target. SA-2 destroyed. Now let's go take a look at the PB sub mode, pre-briefed. Same setup as before, except this time, we're gonna press the OSB to switch from RUK to PB, pre-briefed. Now the symbology in the HUD is a slightly different. We have a different uh, dynamic launch zone this time. We have a double hook at the uh, top. So the first half or the first part is the aircraft movement zone. And the bottom half is the missile movement zone. So the, first, the top part, aircraft movement zone, tells us that the missile will have enough energy to reach its target if we pitch up 
to the um, to the required pitch and altitude. So we're going to see that in a moment. Here we go. I'm just going to make a quick pause here. So we see 39, which is the number of degrees we should put our flight path to. So 39 degrees nose up. And by the time we reach 39 degrees nose up with a 4G pole along the azimuth steering line, we should be at an altitude of 25,200 feet. We are currently at 23,940 feet. Remember that in PB, we need to be within five degrees of each side of the azimuth steering line, which is right here. Otherwise, we won't even be able to shoot the missile. So we're gonna turn right onto the azimuth steering line, pitch up 4G to 39 degrees and 25,200 feet or higher, because it's gonna change as we uh, maneuver. And um, we'll see what trajectory the uh, missile uh, goes for. So azimuth steering line first, here we go. Full power, 4G pull up. On the azimuth steering line, we see two chevrons. They serve as a cue for you to put the flight path marker in between it between before you shoot. And this is the max pull cue and the minimum pull cue. The box flash flashes and magnum. Missile is released. And the missile is going straight up. So it's going for the thin air at altitude. It maximizes its uh, reach. So the missile is now at uh, 65,000 feet, still climbing. 70,000 feet. 77,000 feet. It's still doing 1,400 knots, and now it's going to dive down towards the uh, approximate location, turn on its seeker, and guide towards the SC-2 as long as the radar is uh, active. In the pre-brief mode, we also have a countdown at the bottom of the HUD, 45 seconds. It is the countdown to the uh, missile movement zone. We are already in the aircraft movement zone, but the countdown is still going until the missile movement zone. Once we are in the missile movement zone on our MFD, we get more information. It's telling us that the missile is going to hit its target in 2 minutes and 11 seconds at a time of 5.04 and 05 seconds. So this can be uh, useful when, when we are attacking a target or a SAM radar system with a um, part of a uh, strike package to coordinate our attack. When I'm outside of the uh, firing parameters, like in this case, we're outside of 10 degrees of the azimuth steering line, I'm pressing the weapon release and nothing happens. So I'm turning back in. I got my uh, symbology in the heads up display and I'm inside the uh, missile movement zone. I can press the weapon release magnum and the missile goes away. And again, it's gonna go up to maximize its uh, range. And our job is to uh, get this SC-2 radar to turn on its radar. 20 seconds to impact. The radar warning receiver is still showing us that the SC-2 radar is off offline. So I'm not anticipating an impact. Or maybe we will. Let's see. And that's a dead SA-2. Now this last example will be done in EOM, Equation of Motion. Master arm arm, master mode air to ground, right side power on the uh, AGM-88, left side. We're going to go to weapon, has, pause, table 3, select an SA-2. In EOM sub mode, the dynamic launch zone is exactly the same as with PB, pre-briefed. The only difference is the uh, field of regard box that is uh, much smaller. Once the countdown is finished, we are inside the missile movement zone. And the um, same parameters are showing up on the MFD, which is the time of flight until 0 0.1 and the uh, expected time of arrival. Please note that the... Uh, Time of flight and expected time of impact or uh, expected time of arrival over the steer point selected 
is only available in EOM or PB. If we go to range unknown, even if we are inside of the dynamic lunch zone, it is not available. Free brief, we have it, and it's the exact same as EOM. The uh, flight trajectory for EOM or pre-briefed are essentially almost identical. So back in EOM, we have uh, the chevron inside the meso movement zone. We are about 10 degrees off of our uh, axis to steer point one. Remember from uh, the uh, explanation we did, at the, we did at the beginning that we need a steer point that is within five miles of the approximate location of the uh, SAM system. I know that my current steer point one is about 15 miles away from our SA2 site, but I want to test here if this is still going to work in DCS. And we're going to make a much closer shot this time. I'm going to wait for the SA2 system to uh, turn on its radar before we shoot. Okay, the SA2 is now looking at us, and I want you to uh, take a look at the information we have down here. So I'm going to make a left turn. So you see R15, R20, R25. So that is the amount of degrees we need to turn to put the uh, steer point right on the nose of the airplane. So I'm currently turning to about 90 degrees, even further. Let's go to 100 degrees to show you that the missile will still reach the target after making a uh, big turn and even going back to where we're coming from. So here we are, right 99, and I'm going to press weapon release now. Magnum, missile is off the rail, making a big right turn and climbing. As you can see, it is lofting to maximize its range. It's got to turn 100 degrees to go back towards stair point one. Let's turn right back towards our SAM system so that it keeps its radar on. Our AGM-88 is on its way down. It's got its seeker on and it's uh, tracking towards the SA-2 system, even though the uh, steer point was about 15 miles away. So I don't think that uh, DCS is um, simulating the uh, distance or the field of regard of the missile quite accurately. Still gets the job done. All right, folks, that's it for today. I hope you've learned something, and I'll see you next time.